I always have a 20,000 milliamp hour battery with me anyway. Battery. Battery. The milliamp hour battery. Oh my god. Hey Welcome to The Extra Dimension, the show where we explore ways technology intersects with other parts of our lives, which we like to call the technological convergence. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I am joined by Lily Beyer to talk about our week-long phone swap. Find the show notes for this episode of The Extra Dimension at thenexus.tv slash TED46. So what the heck did we do here? Lily and I decided to trade our phones for one week. Uh, I own the Pixel 3 and she has the iPhone XS. We selected these phones because they are both the flagship devices for their respective platforms. They came out at relatively similar price points uh, and we both have the standard size model so we weren't going to have any weirdness going on with like one person having the XL size and the other person having to you know learn to reach around on a giant screen. We also decided to do this trade right before the fall tech season starts. We know that there are going to be new versions of the operating systems coming out very soon. We know that there are going to be new phones coming out, uh, but this was an experiment to see what life would have been like for the two of us if we had spent late 2018 and most of 2019 with the opposite platform's flagship device. So if you are interested in hearing about the latest stuff as we enter the fall tech season, uh, we're going to be covering the tech keynotes for you know Apple's event uh, and Google's event uh, over on our show Nexus Special, so you can go and subscribe to that. Uh, and we're going to be reviewing the new operating systems such as Android 10, which uh, just came out or last week, and uh, we'll be reviewing it uh, next weekend. Um, and also new devices that come out. We'll be reviewing all those on our show, Second Opinion Reviews. So you can go and subscribe to that as well. There's a parable by David Foster Wallace that really gets at the heart of what we're going for here with this little experiment. The parable goes like this. There are these two young fish swimming along, and they happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way, who nods at them and says, Morning, boys. How's the water? And the two young fish swim on for a bit, and then eventually one of them looks at the other and goes, What the hell is water? So the point here with this phone swapping is not to really convince the other person to switch platforms. We went into this knowing that like neither of us were likely to do that. Um, but the point was to really kind of get out of our comfort zones to you know experience things uh, in a new way to discover what are each of these platforms doing that we may never have noticed if we just continued to stay you know and use what we're familiar with. Uh, for our entire lives because when you're surrounded by something constantly you kind of stop seeing really that it's there you stop recognizing what it does for you and uh, and how it could be improved right Uh, much like the fish with their water so let's get into it Um, first Lily and I sat down before we traded our phones to talk about what we expected to find. Uh, And then after trading phones for nine days, we traded back and talked about what we found during that week. Um, Okay, so really briefly, like the things that I think I'm going to miss really boil down mostly to not having an open operating system. Um... Because like that's just philosophically something that I that I value very deeply is you know not not having the the hardware that I'm using be like locked down and by by like the company that made the software, but also like just in general like customizability. I am glad that iOS at least lets me uh, install other keyboards now. <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so. It would be really cool if Apple started letting other categories of apps be like, you know, third-party apps as well. But No, absolutely not. No. <laughs> Capitalism all the way. 
there's a lot of like kind of user interface things that I really appreciate on Android, especially like in the category of like notifications. There's some really powerful stuff that Android does. Mm -hmm. Um, There are some things that I expect that I will like though. Um, I expect that the navigation gestures are going to be super, super nice. They're so smooth. They are so smooth. Um, The ones on Android right now are just awful. It's a travesty. I'm glad that you agree about that. Yeah. I know that I'm going to really like, like, the animations uh, on iOS. So, like, whenever I rotate the screen, like, that's a much, much smoother animation than on Android. Android basically, like... It's like... Yeah, it, like, turns off the screen for a (laughs) split second. And then, like, the screen reappears in the new orientation. It's so gross to yeah. watch. <laughs> um, I bet that I'm really going to like the battery life. Ultimately, that's not a thing that I need to really, like, worry, worry about, because I always have a 20,000 milliamp hour battery with me anyway. Battery. battery. The milliamp hour battery. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I'm also, like, I'm going to have to relearn how to troubleshoot things, right? Because, like, on Android, I know exactly what to do if an app is misbehaving. I'm like, okay, let's force stop the app, see if that works. Nope, okay, let's go clear the cache. Did that work? You know, I don't even, I don't think that clearing the cache is even a thing on iOS. So I'm going to have to, like, totally relearn what to do in in those cases. I think, in general, it's just, like, quitting, restarting the app, Mm -hmm. or uh, logging out, logging back in, or Mm -hmm. even deleting and re-downloading the app. Right, yeah. Basically just that. Or restarting your phone. Oh yeah, restarting the phone. That's always a good idea. Yeah. (laughs) Did you turn it off and turn it back on again? (laughs) So Lily. That's that's me. What are you expecting? Uh, During this hostage exchange. (laughs) So I guess things that I'll miss will be um, feeling like a badass when I literally just glance at my phone and it unlocks. It's freaking magic. Just needs to see my beautiful face and it unlocks for me. Um, I do really like 3D touch slash force touch or whatever it's called now. Um, I, just because like th- the first ever iPhone that I actually purchased myself was the first one to have force touch okay it was a success i was like super super excited about it i watched the keynote and like got all hyped up um and that was really cool um i do like iMessage features like reacting to messages instead of honestly most of the time it's when i'm too lazy to type out a response um well and like i guess handoff in general because like if i have something open on my phone my Mac will detect it if it's, like, on and online. And then I can open it there. Things that I will probably like. Um, I have noticed a significant weight difference. Like, yours is much, much lighter. Um, which will be nice, like, in the pocket and stuff. But I'm really good at dropping things also. And, like, if if I don't know something's in my hand, like, if it's too light, I'm bound to drop it. Um, gesture typing seems pretty cool. Because typing takes forever. I don't know. I have little fingers. Yeah. Um, I can't think of anything else. Yeah. Except for the fact that I really, really love my phone. Likewise. <laughs> Why are we take, doing this? Take good care of my phone while Why you have it. Do- I, you do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Should we make an insurance policy? Like, if either of us breaks something, um, then we have to, you then, know. Is it, then, yeah. Who's, whose responsibility is it? Whoever broke it. Okay. <laughs> okay so here we are after trading our phones back we uh we used the other person's phone for a week and two days a week and a half two days somewhere around there um and uh and we've had actually a couple of days since then to kind of get used to using our own phone again uh that that Part of the process has been kind of interesting. I'd like to talk about a couple things there as well. Yeah, I got so used to, um, I mean, like pulling the notifications down first of all, but having like different um, icons on the bottom and they're kind of like reversed on my, the way I had it before and the way I have now. So you mean on your, on your home screen, on your launcher? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. 
Was and the- it's not that the um the like factory set is the opposite. It's that the way I like it on iOS and the way I had it before is the opposite of what it ended up as defaulting to on the Pixel. Ah, and you just never like bothered to go and change it? On the Pixel, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um yeah, I've I've found myself trying to swipe to the right to go back instead of hitting the back button. It's so much easier. I got used to that. Yeah. Although there there are some significant cases where swiping to the right gives gave me trouble on the iPhone. Uh so I'll talk about those when we get to that. But yeah. Um okay, so my thoughts on using the iPhone. Um, first, I'd like to talk about a few misconceptions that I had. iOS notifications uh, do indeed have in-app actions that can be associated with them. I had thought that there weren't. Um, so like I can archive an email just by like long pressing on the notification and then tapping on the archive button instead of like opening up the app and hitting the archive button. Um, unfortunately, the like those those extra actions that are associated with a notification never showed up on my pebble right so my pebble watch was is able to show me all the notifications that i have but i can't like perform actions on them i can clear them i can dismiss the notifications and they go away on the phone but i can't like archive emails from the pebble not sure why that is yeah it might just be that 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 those like buttons were added to ios after development on the pebble uh was no longer really actively happening um i had thought that on ios uh apps cannot clear notifications um without like the user interacting with the notification right um so what i was thinking there is like on on android i was used to whenever i get like a hangouts message um if i read that hangouts message on like my desktop google would then like push the status of that message, you know, the red status out to all of my devices and all of my Android devices would clear the notification. Um, I thought that that wasn't available on iOS, but like I tested it and it happens. Like my Hangouts mess or notifications went away on iOS. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. But for some reason, like most apps don't do that. The developers just haven't taken advantage of that setting or something. Uh, they just don't care about it. Yeah, it's a real shame, especially since like... <laughs> Like, my biggest pet peeve was trying to use Discord on this phone because, like, Discord, I'm in a few, like, you know, groups where lots of activity goes on, lots of people are messaging, and I'm not always around for that, but, like, you know, I tap on one of the notifications to open up that channel, and I read all of those those messages... But Discord doesn't clear all of those notifications. So they're all still sitting up there in Notification Center waiting for me next time that I pull it down. That's awkward. Yeah. So then, yeah, it's like I have to manually <clears throat> clear all of these. Luckily, iOS does let me, like, gr- like clear groupings yeah, very quickly. Yeah, that is really nice. Yeah. 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 Um, I, there was one time when I accidentally, like cleared everything that was in the notification center instead of like clearing just the discord group and i was like "Uh oh oh i i have no idea what was in there been there yeah yep um now if this was android that would be it like it would like there would be no way to figure out what those notifications were yeah on ios there is there are the the bubbles yeah is that what they're called badges bubbles they're called badges but i call them bubbles yeah. The yeah, little badges. red number. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. <clears throat> um I had previously thought that there was no fast charging on the iPhones. Um, because like Apple doesn't market it at all. Um but like when I took the iPhone, so you gave me uh like the, the brick that comes with the iPhone, which is the USB A brick, uh, and a regular like USB A to lightning cable, but you also gave me a USB C to lightning cable. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm glad that you had that because when I plug that into like my anchor um, brick that I have at home that supports like power delivery, uh, it was charging like it felt like it was charging as fast as my Pixel does, which is super super nice. Speedy. Yeah, I just wish like I wish that Apple would ship a higher wattage brick with the phone. I mean, I I think it's only 
honestly recently that the the iPhones themselves have been charging more slowly just because the batteries are getting more and more intense and are lasting longer like so you mean like physically they have more capacity yeah okay so i would say that my 6s definitely charged at like one percent a minute or even faster Mm. but the 10s is takes longer because it has more capacity right okay yeah so it matters like the speed actually matters more now than it did in the past yeah 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 um, and now, you know, come to think of it, I think the iPads ship with a larger brick. That's, oh, yeah. It's still USB-A, but I think it delivers more wattage than yep. the little iPhone ones. Yeah. yeah. So maybe they'll start doing a higher wattage one once they <laughs> realize once, what's going on. Once they come out with a USB-C iPhone, yeah. the way that they have a USB-C Mac or iPad Pro. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was surprised that I, I did experience some background apps getting killed. Um, I had expected iOS to have like super duper good memory management. That's the, the reputation that it has, um, that like, oh yeah, you know, iPhones only have like three or four gigabytes of RAM or whatever it is, but you don't need that much because like iOS is just so good at memory management. Um, I did experience a couple of times throughout the week, like, I was listening to a podcast and I was like, I had Google Maps navigation going. So I didn't, I didn't even have Strava recording at the time. Uh, and like the podcast would just suddenly stop because pocket casts, like the background process got killed because the phone needed more memory for something else or something. Um, I was not expecting that at all, but it happened a couple times. So I can't see that I've ever experienced that. Yeah, I... I'm very hard on phones. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and it wasn't, it was more than once and it wasn't, it didn't just feel like a random. No, it was, yeah, it was a couple of times and it was under very similar circumstances mm. while, while, uh, navigating and listening to podcasts. Yeah. 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 Um, usually what happens to me on Android is if I have like podcasts going, Google maps, navigation going and Strava going, uh, Strava will sometimes get killed because it's, it's Strava is the first one sacrificed. Yeah, because I, I think it's because like it's a background process. It's a background process, and, and it's not. I'm not interacting with it like you know as the user the way that I am with the podcast. Yeah, right. Um, so so I think that's why it gets targeted first. Luckily, Strava is really good at recovering from being killed. Mm. So you just open up the app again, and it goes, "Oh, hey." you want to resume the recording that you were doing before? And I'm like, yeah, please. (laughs) Please. (laughs) Do we want to talk about Apple, the the built-in stock apps versus uh, the Google versions of apps? Um, Clearly you do. I really do. So I spent the first half of the week using only Apple apps uh, as much as I could. And then halfway through, I switched to installing the Google equivalents and checking those out just to see like, yeah, which ones I prefer and and how things went. Um, There are a few exceptions. I never really was able to use Apple Maps because Apple Maps doesn't have biking directions. So it would not, it it would have been useless to me. Um, Also, since like Google Fi, I have it set to deliver my SMS messages via Hangouts. Um, that means that I was never receiving my SMS messages in the Apple Messages app, um, but I did receive iMessages from a few people. So I did get did get to try it out there. Uh, and then I also had a few Google apps that were installed just to like synchronize my data. Um, so that would be like Photos and Google Fit and Google Keep and Google Drive. But I did try out like the Apple versions of those apps. Even though I had the Google version oh, installed. Oh, so you tried out like health and like yeah, yeah, pictures and mm-hmm. yeah. and and actually in the the Apple Health example, um, I have to be using Apple Health, or at least I have to have it like you know activated in order to use Google Fit, because on the iPhone Google oh, Fit sure. synchronizes with Apple Health. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of Apple Health, I was really annoyed that it made me change the units for every single metric individually. <laughs> Like, there's no master, like, imperial to metric toggle. 
every single time that I put in like, okay, now I'm going to put in my weight. I want to change it to kilograms. Okay, now I'm going to put in my height. I have to change it to centimeters. All right, I went for a walk. Oh, I have to change it to kilometers. Like every single individual thing, I had to change them to metric. <laughs> Apple likes America and the American system, apparently. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's very strange. Um, that is actually pretty strange because like iPhones aren't just used in America where we use the imperial system. Well, yeah, I'm, I figured that like if you if you activate an iPhone in a different region, then it defaults it to metric stuff. Yeah. But if you want to use imperial units while you're over there, you still have to individually switch each of these. Like, yeah, it just seems strange that each one of them is its own thing instead of like one master toggle. I don't know. Weird thing. Um, the keyboard. Oh my god. Uh, oh, it felt so weird. I I'm so used to gesture typing these days. Like, I'm bummed that it didn't have gesture typing. I hear that that's coming in iOS 13. Probably, that like the stock yeah. app is gonna have gesture typing or something. That's beyond the scope of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I was bummed that it didn't have gesture typing, but at least it did have one handed mode. <gasps> And I, I thought it was very funny when you when you grabbed like the, the phone after I had it for two days and you were like, why is the keyboard in one-handed mode? And I was like, because I type one-handed. Like, <laughs> it was just such an obvious answer. I don't, that's honestly just not something I do unless it's purely out of necessity. Like, the, the, the simultaneous movement of my thumbs is just so quick that I mm. cannot imagine only using one. I hardly ever have both of my hands on my phone. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you hold it like a like a video game controller. Yeah, using both your thumbs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I don't I don't do that hardly ever. Um, I found that the predictive text suggestions on Apple's keyboard were very very good. Um, I think they're probably yeah a, a little better than uh, than Gboard. Um, I was bummed out that I can't search for emoji. In, like, the emoji menu. What do you mean? So, like, what I'm used to... Oh, yeah. Okay, I know yeah, what you mean. Yeah. So, yeah. like, I go into the emoji menu on Gboard, and it pops up with a search bar at the top, so I can, like, you know, sort through yeah. them. Um, but I think the reason Apple doesn't do that is because emoji do show up as suggestions yeah, if you in type the like predictive text. Yeah. Party, or, like, sad, or, yeah, like, yeah. love. So I, yeah, I just had to get used to like accepting that those pictures were <laughs> worth looking at. Yeah. That's honestly what I do most of the time. If I'm looking for a very specific emoji that I don't use a lot, uh -huh. I'll like type the word that I think is most related or the specific one and it usually shows up. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of just like scrolling. Through. Yeah. Scrolling through the whole thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then halfway through the week when I did install Gboard and started using that, oh, it was such a, it was a breath of fresh air. Uh, cause like even, even with one handed mode, like gesture typing is just so much faster with one hand than, you know, individually picking out each, each letter. And also, especially like having to reach down for the space bar in between each word. God, that's exhausting. Why do people do that? <laughs> you have to put spaces between words now? Yeah. It's oh a, my god it's absurd <laughs> oh also also um there's no like the the period isn't in the main keyboard menu right like you can double tap on the space bar to put in a period mm. right but when i end a message and i want to put a period at the end and i don't want to have a space after the period then i have to go like into the symbols menu and hit the period button i got very annoyed at that is it really yeah, it is. I never even noticed. I just use the the double space all the time. Right, but I'm oof, I'm very picky, and I don't want to have that like empty white space at the end of my use messages. The backspace one. Yeah, but like, wait, doesn't that delete the period as well? No. What? If you backspace one. Oh, weird. I would just does this. It backspaces the space. I would have expected it to delete both of them. No. Probably because that's what it does on yeah. Android. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. Um. Which is like a symptom of the whole gesture typing paradigm where it's like, oh, I like each, each Do all word. all the things at once. Yeah, each word is like one action. So if you yeah. hit the delete key, then it just deletes the last action that you did instead of just one character. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, also, there's man, there's so much space, like empty space under the keyboard, which I didn't notice a whole lot until I started using Gboard and I set a, like a dark mode on Gboard, which is there even when I'm in like a light themed app. And so then I would have, you know, because like the stock app changes from like light to dark depending on whether yeah. the app itself is light or dark. Yeah. Um, but since I had Gboard set to be dark all the time, like if I was in a light themed app, I would just have like a whole bunch of like just light gray space underneath the keyboard. Hmm. That was like there was nothing there. There's an emoji button in one or the globe button in one corner and like the microphone button in the other corner. But in between them, there's just a bunch of gray space. That's strange. Yeah. Um, the stock calendar app, uh, I kept, oh, man, I was getting very, very frustrated with this because I couldn't figure out how to get into week view. Like it was showing never me, tried that, yeah. it was using, it was showing it's me just, just a day a, or month. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like the schedule or, or month view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, turns out if you turn the phone sideways, if you let it auto rotate the screen, then it goes into week view. What? And like now that I know that, it's like, oh, that makes sense because, because when, seven days. Yeah, when you've yeah, got a wider better... screen, you can see all seven days. Yeah. Never occurred to me to just flip <laughs> also like I had the phone in, in like portrait lock, right? Yeah. So it wouldn't have switched anyway. Yeah. But like that was not communi communicated anywhere in the UI. I had to go and look up on like a forum to find that out. Huh. So, yeah, but like now that I know that, I could probably use the stock calendar app just fine. Um, and, you know, since it synchronizes with my Google Calendar and everything, mm. no worries really. Yeah. Um, after I did start using the Google Calendar app, I'm like, oh, yeah, I do like this a little bit better, but like it's not like a night and day difference. You're not like, I will die with Google Calendar. Exactly, yeah. Um, however, the mail app is garbage. Oh, oh, I hate it. Do you, do you use the stock mail app yeah usually okay um let's definitely talk about that then <laughs> um so yeah, yeah. so first off oh man that disgusting sent from my iphone signature by default <laughs> i definitely made sure to turn that off <laughs> i really like that because then you can tell when you're like no 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 no. you i don't like it for the reason that you think i do okay okay when you're emailing with someone you can tell who like might be a little less well versed ah. in like technology mm -hmm. and a little less savvy and doesn't pay as much attention to settings and it's just like this is a phone right i don't give a shit yeah. you know like <laughs> versus like people who actually pay attention and like know what's going on in the mm -hmm. system and stuff so it's like it's it's another little data point in addition to like oh they have an aol email address yeah. right <laughs> yeah or like hotmail yeah yeah um <laughs> That's I, why I like it. When I was when it's I was funny. testing it, um, like somebody, my friend Quentin had told me that like, oh yeah, even if you like manually delete the signature before sending a message, it'll like insert that that signature again. So I decided to send myself an email to test it out, and I put like a ridiculous signature at the bottom that was like, wasn't it herpy derpy derpy? Yeah, it was something about herpy derpy whatever. Yeah. And then I almost forgot to delete like to get rid of that. Uh, signature before I sent an official email to somebody, <laughs> which would have been very embarrassing. Um, but yeah, no. Okay. So the main reason that I don't like the mail app is that there's like, there's no algorithm built into this mail client to help me like, you know, stay sane while mm -hmm. using my emails. Right. It's all just, it's one, it's a chronological list of all the emails that I have received. Um, and every single message that I get has a notification unless I go and create a list of VIPs and then messages, I can set it to like only give me notifications for messages from VIPs. But that's pretty exhausting too, because then I have to go and like, you know, list all of the people who I know in real life yeah. as VIPs. And, you know, and then it's like, it's entirely possible that I could get an important email from somebody who I like have never received an email from before. And I do want to get a notification from that. I mean, you might be able to flag certain ones as important and only receive notifications for those. I'm not sure. I've never yeah, but tried like, it. But, but like, but... you know, how do you, how do you, how do you get it to give you a notification about important things that it has never seen before? Right. You know? Yeah. Like, 
Um, so this is the thing that like, yeah, Gmail does super well is it sorts out all of my messages into different categories. And then the default behavior is it only gives me notifications for stuff that it, uh, I think it calls the primary inbox, oh, right? Yeah. So yep. stuff that isn't social media related or promotions or updates or forums. Um, yeah. And that like, I rely on that so heavily that I don't know how to use uh, a more like traditional mail client that that just has is a chronological list, you know. For me, it's like the opposite. I don't know. I kind of like having having everything all in one spot because, I mean, first of all, I don't get eight hundred emails a day like some people. Second of all, <laughs> I just I don't know. I tend to be someone who goes through everything i don't know twice a day in my email and then i just delete whatever i don't need archive what i need archived read what i need to read and then like go from there i don't know yeah i would who i I get emails from is like shopping slash like food things and then like work and then like my parents and you (laughs) like that's oh and maybe school okay (laughs) like that's it yeah i'm I get a lot of emails. I don't do a lot of email correspondence. Well, I, a professional, (laughs) have a lot of emails to deal with. Yeah, we know. (laughs) Especially now that I have uh, hooked in both my St. Paul Bicycle Coalition and the Nexus TV email addresses. You all get them in the one? They all go into my one inbox now. Yep, (gasps) yep, yep, yep. So don't like that. I need, yeah, I need a lot of automatic sorting to go on. The only thing I have similar to that is that my, like the school address that they give you for MCTC is just forwarded to my yeah. Gmail. Mm-hmm. But I guess I'm not running three separate accounts in <laughs> one account. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now note that the one email account that I have that I did not hook into this system is my like actual work account. You know, the work that I get paid for. I want that to be completely separate because I don't want to, ha- like, get notifications for work stuff ever when I'm not... At work. At work. Being yep. paid to work. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the browser. Oh, my God. Safari. What on earth? How do I do anything with Safari? There's, like, no menu. <laughs> it's kind of the same problem that I had with, like, the calendar app was, like, I didn't know how to do anything because nothing was communicated to me. Um, just figure it out, man. Like no, I'm I, just okay. Here's the things I figured out how to do. I could open a new tab. Ooh. I could view my list of tabs. Ooh. I could close tabs that were in that list. Yep. I could open a private tab. I struggled really hard when I the first time that I like had a web page open and I was like, I want to find a word in this page. You know, just do the search. Control F. Yep. Couldn't figure out how to do that. Could like, turns out it's in the share menu. What? I have to share this web page, but I'm not sharing it with another app. I'm sharing it with a feature of the app that I'm currently in. Yeah. That conceptually makes zero sense to me. Very strange. I I don't know what to tell you because I've always just downloaded Google Chrome and then yeah. gone from there. I felt, yeah, I felt much more at home once I had Chrome. Um Cause yeah, you just, you tap on like the three dot menu and then, Hey, look, all of the things that I could possibly want to do with this webpage are just there in, in a list. Yay. Yay. Now note that of course, even with Chrome installed, it's still using the Safari like uh, JavaScript engine and rendering engine under the hood. So even if I found, you know, if I encountered like web pages that aren't compatible with Safari, then like I'm still out of luck. So Hmm. That's a shame. Yeah. Oh, also, here's a weird thing. So you know how some apps, like, let you open up web pages without, like, you know, switching apps to Safari? But it just, it's like, it's an instance of Safari that exists within that app, Mm -hmm. right? Um, For some reason, those instances seem to be, like, completely sandboxed away from the main Safari instance. So I wasn't, like, logged into any of my accounts, when viewing web pages oh. in, you know, so like I would open up a, a, an article in Feedly and it would open in this, like in app browser 
And then like, you know, I'd try to like comment, but it's like, oh, I'm not logged into whatever comment system they're using, even though I logged into it earlier in actual Safari. Very strange. I thought that like the whole point of having it be at Safari was so that it shared all of that. Mm. At least that's that's the way I view like, you know, cr- like Chrome's web view in on Android. So, you know. Um, also weird thing is that like I can add web pages to my home screen as like shortcuts. So I did that with Facebook because I don't want to have the Facebook app installed. I just use Facebook's, um, you know, mobile website. Mm hmm. I can do that from Safari, but I can't do that from Chrome. So for most of my browsing, I used Chrome, but then whenever I tapped on like Facebook, it opened up in Safari. Yeah. But it didn't open actually, now that I think about it, it didn't open as a tab in Safari. It opened as like its own, like it, it's pretending to be a full screen app, but it was a Safari instance, right? Um, Just a little strange that I like didn't even have the option to add shortcuts to the home screen from Chrome. I don't know. Oh yeah, and then the most oh, this is this thing frustrated me a lot when it came to like using different different apps for the same purpose, right? Is that like I can't set a system-wide default app for a particular action, right? So if I like if I tap on a an address, I prefer using Google Maps over Apple Maps, right? Mm-hmm. But it would always open in Apple Maps. It didn't even prompt me to like ask like what what app do you prefer to use? Um, unless, unless I'm doing it from one of Google's apps. So all of Google's apps have a little setting in there that lets you choose like, oh, do you, do you want to open like links in Chrome or do you want to send them over to Safari? Do you want to open things in Google maps or in Apple maps? So like once I had all of the Google apps installed, then I had like this little closed Google ecosystem within the iOS ecosystem and I could kind of sequester myself away and be nice and, and comfortable. <laughs> I think that's just called cheating. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't suppose you tried to open an address from iMessage because that's like, I'm usually going from iMessage, Twitter, some other kind of app. And if you like long press on the address, it might mm. give, it gives you the option to open in Maps, open in Google Maps, open... Okay. Safari. Yeah, no, I think I only ever was like tapping on things from Safari itself. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we talk about some things that I did like? Yeah. So, I love the battery, like the battery life on this thing, especially the standby battery life. Um, I only lost like six percent of battery overnight. It's so good. for most nights. Yeah, I love it. Um, after using it the phone for like the whole week um my verdict is that the both the pixel and the iphone have pretty similar battery life when they're being used actively right um and so that's most of my days where i'm like you know listening to podcasts and recording on strava um you know during my like daily commute and whenever i'm like running errands and stuff like that um so for for most days uh i have to charge both phones like midway through the day so it wasn't, yeah, it, like it wasn't like orders of magnitude better than the Pixel, but like standby time was so much better. You use your phone so much. I do use my phone. Well, I don't know if I use it so much, but I use it hard when I use it. You know, yeah. I push, uh, yeah, I push fair. the phone hard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like with a good example is what day was it? Tuesday. I had the day off, and like. Oh, yeah, the day, like, we switched back, but not until the evening. Mm -hmm. And I was leaving the apartment with, like, 45% on, like, low power mode. And I did not feel comfortable leaving without a cord or, like, a cord and... uh, Like an external battery. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But, like, if I had done that with my iPhone, I think I would have been fine because Mm -hmm. i was basically only using it for like navigation and like kind of standby time and maybe a few messages and i was out from 11 a.m to 3 p.m ish i think like i had to charge it 
at about one o'clock because it had gotten down to like eight percent or something like that mm. and i really wasn't using it that much yeah i never leave the ho- the house without like my twenty thousand milliamp hour battery i so. see now why you don't i was like <laughs> why do you need that doesn't your battery last forever Apparently not. Well, no. I mean, even the even the iPhones didn't for me. So. I mean, uh... like there was there was maybe like one day uh, during like teacher training week where I was basic like the phone was just in my pocket for the entire day because I was just working on the desktop at school and you know wasn't using the phone ever. Yeah. And that like it lasted f- for like like yeah it lasted for the entire day there no problem. Yeah. Um, but for most days where I'm like yeah my phone is actively doing stuff for me all the time i guess yeah uh i like face id face id is very nice it uh it felt much more consistent than the pixel 3's fingerprint sensor um but like after switching back after having the pixel again for a few days uh i'm like oh man it feels so much faster the pit the fingerprint sensor does because i don't have to like do that extra swipe up step To get into the phone. Yeah. You know? And there's not really an animation that comes with, like, unlocking the pixel with your fingerprint, right? Right, yeah, no, yeah, it just turns on the screen and and you're in the phone, yeah. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, less consistent but feels faster uh, on the pixel side. Um, Also, like, the two of them definitely take different habits, right? So, like, with my pixel, Whenever I pick up the phone, like, my finger just automatically goes to where the fingerprint sensor is, mm-hmm. right? Um, and it doesn't matter, like, what I'm doing with my face. Whereas, like, with the iPhone, I had to get in the habit of, like, oh, I can't be, like, holding my chin or anything like that when I pick up the phone because yeah. it needs to see my face. <laughs> so, you can't be in the thinker pose. Exactly, yeah. Steve Jobs, like, how did he unlock his iPhone while doing <laughs> that? that pose for his his biography (laughs) yeah i don't know i mean i'm there were a lot of instances where i was like oh yeah it's nice to have the the fingerprint sensor and like not worry about where i'm looking but there were also many 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 instances where there might have been like a thin layer of something on my finger yeah and i had to bother to wipe it off and make sure it was the right temperature and dry just to like get into my phone you know (laughs) yeah 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 and there are quite a few times where i might not be like holding the phone or near it but i need to look at something on it um and so like if it if the screen is already awake or if I like double tap it or it like raises to wake Mm -hmm. or I just say the hot words, um, I can unlock it then and like see what's going on without having to touch it. You're talking about with the pixel? No. You can unlock it without touching it? With the iPhone. That's probably why like, um, Google has the, you can unlock it with your voice feature. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, which I, uh, I turned off cause I didn't want it to ever hear me saying stuff to like, you know, to the Google homes that are in my house mm-hmm. and then like unlocking in my pocket and having the screen on and now it's doing stuff in my pocket and I don't realize it. And yeah. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Reminders <laughs> on iOS can be set to a specific location. Woo! I'm so mad at Google for getting rid of that feature. Like, that was one of the reasons that I loved Inbox so much back in the day was because like, <laughs> what? It wasn't that long ago. It got killed like almost a whole year ago now. Oh, that's yeah. so long. That's so long. <laughs> uh, so like, yeah, like I could snooze both reminders and emails until either a specific time or a specific place. And yeah, reminders on iOS brings that back. Uh Except it even it's even one ups like Google's feature. Um, you can set a reminder to go off when you arrive at a particular location, or when you leave a particular location. Ooh. Like that's nice. Yeah. Why not Google bring it back? It sounds like you need to um, get an APK for the iOS reminders app. Or something. Well, I mean, just, yeah. <laughs> um, sounds like what I need is I need to figure out what, like, third-party reminder system, you know, has that yeah. kind of thing built in. Because it can't be. It's not that hard. Like, there's, you know, location APIs uh, and geofencing and everything. Um, so, yeah. And it's too bad that, like, I, I wasn't able to use the reminders a, a whole lot on the iPhone because, like, 
it that that won't synchronize with all my other devices i'll, ne- I'll never be able to get those reminders popping up on all my other devices mm. um so i didn't i mean they... i didn't set very many reminders on there yeah i did a couple of them they're on you know macbooks right and like ipads i'm sure i'm a multi-platform gentleman <laughs> <laughs> um oh the default brightness adjuster is very very good on ios i didn't feel the need to change like the brightness ever i do wish that it got lower than the lowest one that it has yeah but um yeah because like you know they're like in a completely dark room like i felt like i was burning my eyes out yeah um but like other than that i never ever touched the the brightness slider um and like Android's brightness uh, improved a lot in Android nine, um, but like every once in a while, I still find myself having to like, oh, let's bump it up a few a few notches or down a few notches. Hmm. Um, how did you find that on during your week? I think I turned the auto off just because I do that. Oh, no matter what. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, the first first or second day, it was probably okay. I probably had some situations, like you said, where I had to turn up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And like the times that I can remember having um, auto adjustment on for brightness on the iPhone, it's been, yeah, really good. So uh, I liked the like the compass and measure apps that are in the utilities folder. Um, app is one of my... Yeah. So I, I definitely didn't... F- find a use for them during my week with the phone um but like the the measure app especially like i have had times in my life where i'm like where's the nearest like tape measure i need to measure this thing and i know that phones have the capability of doing that these days and i wish that my phone had an app on it that just by default that does that um because it like it would make so much sense for yeah. google to build one of those because like both Apple and Google are doing their like AR kit and AR core and the measuring app is like such a no brainer, like obvious example of, Mm -hmm. of, you know, like a showcase for that functionality, but Google's hasn't done it. I don't understand why they just have those like fun little stickers or whatever, like those little characters that you can bring up in the camera app and Mm -hmm. have them dance around on the floor, whatever. (laughs) Yeah. I was upset that there was no (laughs) compass app there were a few times where i was like heading to a bus and i need to be sure that i was at the right state like if it's a cluster of stations and they're going like north east west south like Mm -hmm. i need to be sure that i'm at the one that's pointing in the right direction were you using google maps to like you know direct you to the to the bus stop and stuff yeah okay because google maps now has ar walking directions yeah 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 and that would have definitely steered you right I don't think they popped up at the time, but hmm. I don't know. Okay. Um, autofilling passwords via Bitwarden did feel a little bit more reliable on iOS than it did on Android, um, which is, you know, a little strange because both platforms have like an API that Bitwarden ties into. Yeah. Um, I don't know. For some reason, the like password field detection was a little better on iOS. There were a few things that I didn't like. There were quite a few things that I didn't like. <laughs> a few things. A few things. Um, Has a page worth. Yeah. You know, well, they're bullet points, so. You know. <laughs> it, that makes it worse. That does make it worse. You're right. <laughs> I don't like DRM. I hate it. I hate it, hate it, hate it. Okay. And I did actually experience this on iOS because the Pebble app, turns out, is no longer available in the App Store. Um it literally got removed like two days before we traded phones, oh, which is, oh, it's sweet irony, isn't it? <laughs> so I had to go and figure out like the workaround. And luckily, like the, the Rebel Alliance uh, has kept it going. <laughs> yes, that is what the community is called of people who have like created all of the server infrastructure and back end stuff that the Pebble needs to continue functioning. I'll give you one guess as to how Rebel is... Uh, spelled oh i already know i've seen it yeah yeah (laughs) the rebel community is very active and you know figures out solutions to these kinds of things so the two solutions well there are three solutions either wait for like fitbit to go and solve this problem with apple whatever the problem is and bring it back into the app store 
That's not super likely because Fitbit doesn't care about Pebble. Nope. Um, jailbreak the phone. Well, I wasn't going to do that to your phone. Please no. Also, it is not currently possible to do that on a new, like on an iPhone XS on the version of iOS that we had. Um, or I grab uh, an, a, a DRM free copy of the app from the Rebel website sideload it from like so i have to plug my phone into my computer and use a a program uh to sideload it onto the phone which which involves me having to put in my apple id username and password so that apple can sign the app file <laughs> and on the phone i actually had to go into the settings and like tell it to trust this developer oh i've done that a couple of times before. yeah and then yeah. on top of all that, I had like Apple will revoke that developer's access after seven days. So if I were going to be doing this long term, I- every seven days I would have to re sideload the Pebble app onto my phone. Or which is ridiculous. Get a watch that has an updated app. No, <laughs> no, I refuse because like. Being able to use I mean, eventually, our... eventually, when the pebble dies, mm-hmm. you can. You I know, probably could, yeah, or I could just buy another pebble passing. for twenty bucks. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like I am, I am so determined to continue to let old hardware continue to work because, like, we can't just keep manufacturing all these new devices, and you know, like that's that's not ecologically sustainable yeah so when like when a watch key is still working like why replace it just because you know software drm willy-nilly blah 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 well yeah so yeah um when it when it's the pebbles time yeah pebble time (laughs) the pebbles time (laughs) (laughs) oh hey oh hey an alarm went off it didn't use the sound that i asked it to Speaking of alarms, what a brat. I discovered that you can't dismiss an upcoming alarm before it goes off in iOS. You you can only like go into the clock app and like turn off that alarm and then turn that alarm back on after that time has passed. Yeah. Which is like, yeah. It's a toggle. Like, yeah, like I I don't know. I can't remember I won't be able to remember to go and turn that alarm back on, you know, for a recurring alarm. Um that's super risky. Yeah. Um, here's a really funny thing. So I, I used the bedtime feature cause it's there, you know, I've never even, yeah. Like, like I was setting up the phone and it presented itself and I was like, bedtime. Yes, that sounds useful. Um, so bedtime does a couple of things to encourage you to like get ready for bed. Um, number one, it gives you a notification telling you that your bedtime is coming up. And then also it turns on do not disturb mode. Now, the funny thing is that I never actually see that notification because do not disturb doesn't let me see the notification you know it's muted because it's in do not disturb mode it doesn't send it and then turn on do not disturb no no it does them both like simultaneously That's and, funny. and do not disturb wins out every time <laughs> <laughs> like that wasn't well thought out um i definitely missed being able to use my google Fi vpn uh at school um, and I know I could go and like find a third party VPN or something like that to use, you know, in order yeah. to like access websites that are blocked at school. Um, but, you know, then I got to go and figure out which VPNs are trustworthy and which ones are worth it. And, you know, yada, yada. I'm already paying for Google Fi. So like, I wish I could just use that one. <laughs> sound design. I don't like sound design on the I- on the iOS. Whoever did the sound. On the iOS. Yes. Whoever did the sound design for iOS has no restraint. You don't like any of it? No, like, okay, the like here's my philosophy, right? The iPhone, the, the phone should only be making noises when I need to get some information from it, but I'm not looking at the phone. If I'm actively interacting with the phone, I don't need sounds. I shouldn't have sounds. There are other people around me who are going to get bothered by the sounds that my phone is making, right? So I turned off all of like the keyboard tap sounds. Oh yeah, I, those are. Mm-hmm. But like you know the 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 mail app and the messages app, 
by default they uh have like this kind of like whooshing sound or whatever that plays when you send messages the send um and you can turn that off in mail but for messages you can only turn that off by turning off notification sounds entirely for the messages app Hmm. which is like that's untenable and the workaround that i saw people talking about online was okay turn off the notification sound and then set a custom notification sound for all of your contacts that's doing a lot that is a lot yeah so i did not do that what was my solution i don't remember I don't even did you what... just like turn the ringer off i might have well so that's my hypothesis here is like i've noticed that a lot of ios users seem to have their ringer set to silent all the time and i'm i'm mm. hypothesizing that part of the reason for that is because all of the system like you know feedback sounds also turn off when you have the ringer off yeah so hmm i mean i keep mine on but like well i keep mine on in settings where it's appropriate right to be on yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah no you have i have restraint <laughs> unlike the sound designer yeah. apparently <laughs> You know who you know who else doesn't have restraint? <laughs> Whoever did like the visual animations. I love the animations. The, yeah, the, so for the most part I really they're really so like beautiful. they're really pretty. Yeah. But like for example in the keyboard, right? The predictive text stuff that shows up, it doesn't just change from one word to another. It morphs from one word to another, right? It's like flashy flashy. Yeah. And like when I'm typing, I don't need that. I don't want my I don't want to be distracted by stuff in my peripheral vision. But, like, the human brain is wired to, like, oh, there's movement in my peripheral vision. I'm going to look at that. Yeah, exactly. So, like, all these predictive texts above my thumb, like, morphing around. It's like, ooh, that's very distracting. I got to look at that. Huh. So that's that's a thing that I would change. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I found myself, like, like it, it's a keyboard and it's a text message. Like, you don't need a lot of, like, pomp and circumstance, right? But, right. But, like, I was a little bored. Oh, okay. Texting on the phone. <laughs> It's like I need more visually appealing things to be happening right now. More pizzazz. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Coming soon in Android 10. More pizzazz. More pizzazz. Um, notifications. This was one of my biggest beefs with iOS is like, number one, I can't change the notification sound for each app. Like Twitter makes the Twitter notification sound. Duolingo makes the Duolingo notification sound, and I can't manually change it unless that app has, like, built in that option for me within the app. Yeah. But, like, other than that, I have no recourse. Um, And you can't just turn the sound off for individual ones, right? uh, No, I think that's part of the system, like, notification settings is, like, okay, do I want it to have banners or just notifications? Do I want it to allow sound? Yeah, banners, badges. Yeah. Sounds. Yeah. 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 Um, So, like, I, that's, that's something that is a big part of my kind of, like, sanity check on, on Android is I have set all of, like, the apps that are sending me notifications that are like direct messages from another human being right i have set those all to use the hangouts notification sound because i love hangouts so much (laughs) so like all of my emails that come in those are hangouts notification sound Mm -hmm. all the hangouts that i get hangouts uh facebook messenger hangouts notification sound right everything um whereas all of the apps that are giving me other notifications right that are still I still consider important enough to get notifications, but they're not from a direct other human being, right? Those do just like a ping, a little ding, and then that's it. Um, So I can can differentiate very easily between just like those two categories of of things that I care about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And even, it even goes like one step further. Within each app, I can set like different... They call them channels. So like each app can set different channels for different types of notifications. So like within Twitter, I can set my DMs to use the Hangouts notification sound Mm -hmm. because that's coming directly from another human being. But like all of the notifications for people like liking things or stuff that, you know, the algorithm thinks I would be interested in, right? Those just use my little ping sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I miss that so much. Uh, yeah, that's understandable. Um, I also, I don't like that, like, the notifications that are shown on the lock screen are different than the notifications that are in the notification center. So, like, I always have to remember to go in and check the notification center specifically to see if there are older stuff that, like, the phone thinks that I saw at some point, but I didn't actually, like, pay attention to the first time that I saw them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But, I mean, you can, from the lock screen... Pull it up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get to... Yeah, but they're not they're not presenting themselves right there, yeah. you know. Um, and also, like there there are no notification icons along the top of the phone, along the status bar. Yeah, because right? there's a knot. Right, because there's a big giant knot. <laughs> um, and yeah, like that's that's something that I rely heavily on on Android as well. Is like the ambient display shows me notification icons, and they always exist up there, so I can always just kind of in my peripheral vision see when I have notifications waiting for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't set do not disturb for like a certain amount of time. No, you can't. Which is a shame. Yeah. Cause like when I, when I like lay down for a nap, I I'm know that I'm going to be taking a nap for only like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it would be very useful to have the phone automatically turn off. Do not disturb after half an hour. But you can't do that on iOS. I did find that actually really nice. The only time I turn it off is when I'm going to bed. And so, like, you hit Do Not Disturb and it gives you the option until you turn off or for, like, this amount of hours and you get the plus or minus. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. I can just have it turn on, like, 20 minutes after I wake up. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, and also, like... They so both Android and iOS let you set like kind of do not disturb schedules, right? So like yeah. like bedtime you automatically can, yeah. turns it on overnight, um, and then iOS also gives you one extra slot of like scheduling, right? So I set that to be during school. Um, Android gives you like an unlimited number of slots, mm. so like I was able to set it to always be in do not disturb whenever I'm at school. And, like, whenever I'm at church, which I don't go to anymore, but, like, it was useful back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. Uh, I did miss... I, I kind of... I really expected, like, when I pull down Control Center, and then it's got the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth and everything, you know, those settings there. I expected to be able to, like, long, like long press or force touch or something to go straight into the settings app. Like, if I want to join a new Wi-Fi network or something like that. Yeah. Right? No, you, you can't. You have to go home... Go to the settings app. Go into Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I miss that. I also miss being able to pull down notifications with the fingerprint sensor on the back. That's amazing. It is. Yeah. I'm kind of worried that, like, you know, in the future when uh, Google's supposedly coming out with, like, a Face ID type thing in the Pixel 4, I'm worried that they're not going to have, like, anything on the back to be able to, like, pull down. And then your life's going to be ruined. Yeah. Like, what am I going to do? And... You know what they're going to do? They're going to do that and also make, like, only a large phone at the same time. So, like, the top of the phone is just going to be leagues away from my thumb. Leagues. I'm never going to be able to reach it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I also miss, like, the, the camera shortcuts that let me, like, open the camera app by double pressing the power button and, like taking a picture with the volume buttons and like switching cameras by just like double twisting the phone. Yeah. Like that's especially useful in the winter when I like want to take a picture, but I don't want to like take my fingers out of my gloves. Mm-hmm. Um, I miss that. I don't think that's possible on iOS. Uh, no, probably not. Yeah. Oh, speaking of the camera, I kept accidentally opening the camera from like the notification center. Like if I'm trying to swipe away a notification oh you swiped from all the way to the... Oh, okay exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. like i like my thumb would accidentally catch on the very edge of the screen or yep. whatever and so then instead of swiping that one notification apparently now i'm going into the camera app yeah so like i got out of the habit of like swiping notifications all the way away and i would just like half swipe them away and then hit the clear button oh. yeah that was like my solution for that problem yeah i mean yeah <laughs> which is too bad have some random observations that are like neither positive nor negative but just like they are they they is what they is we love a random weight difference the phones are definitely different weights yeah yours is lighter yep um i didn't like 
I don't I don't think it was a problem for me having a heavy phone. That's good. Yeah. Um and I've said that before that like phones could get much heavier and I wouldn't have a problem and this this definitely uh validates that that thought. Mm-hmm. Um I have noticed after getting the Pixel back that like I don't know, like hold like holding it I don't have to like flex my fingers. I can just like rest it on my fingers and like just kind of the natural tension of my f- four fingers together just kind of hold it up. Whereas with the iPhone, like I was, oh, it I was, takes uh, effort I was like, yeah, up. I was actually holding it <laughs> instead of like resting it on my hand. Yeah, <laughs> which is honestly probably more secure. I should probably be holding my phone all the time. Probably, but you know, like, yeah. <laughs> um, the iPhone XS's vibration motor is very insistent. It's amazing. It's yeah. I don't yeah. I don't know if that's positive or negative, but like I noticed it. I think it's positive. <laughs> I mean, that's I don't know. I consider that to be the point of the vibration motor itself is that and like it's so insistent that even though you have the ringer off, you know something's going on. Right. Whereas, well, yeah, I'm. I, and on the if pixel, if it's too subtle, you won't know if you get a notification or not. Yeah, and I, I don't think it's too subtle in the pixels case. Like I always well, notice yeah. when I get a notification, but like the the iPhone is like, it felt like it's like, hey, you cannot ignore me. <laughs> There's a thing that you need to pay attention to right now. Ian. <laughs> Ian. <laughs> Your notifications. You're blowing up. Um, I noticed that a lot of apps, like even third-party apps, right, were encouraging me to like set Siri shortcuts for particular things, um, which is not something that I have seen for the Google Assistant on Android. So I think if I were to use this long term, I would probably start using Siri more often than I have used the Google Assistant because you like, would like Siri a lot. Yeah, like I, I would probably set a lot of these custom shortcuts. Yeah. Uh, to do particular things in the apps that I like. Um, I noticed that like okay, so the the navigation gestures, right? Um, you swipe to the right to go to the most recent app, mm-hmm. right? But then like immediately afterwards, if you want to go to the app that you just left it's you swipe same. you swipe left so like conceptually really? like yeah the 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 app is like the, they're in kind of a, a list in an order and that one is still over there all the way over on the right oh. and so you swipe left to get back to it yeah, that's right. but after some period of time it goes back it becomes the the next the second most right one yeah and I, because I, it's most recent instead of exactly. just previous. I couldn't tell you exactly what that period of time is. It's probably like two minutes. It's, I don't know. It seemed like it was like, like, this seems like the kind of thing that Apple's probably done a lot of market research on of like, how long does it take the user to forget that they just left the last app? Yeah. And that's probably like the period of time that they set for that. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know what that period of time is. Um, a little weird thing. Uh, it seems odd to me to have like two different visual representations for volume. So like when you use the the hardware buttons to move the volume up and down, it's the volume indicator that looks just like on Mac OS. Yeah. It's... When you go into control center, there's the more like kind of frosted glass iOS one that, that you not, can actually touch. It's not by unit. It's just a slide. Yeah, uh uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, like, a kind of a weird disconnect in my mind of, like, you know, the visual... The visual language here is very different. I think they're switching the on-screen one in the next iOS. Okay, so it won't look like like Mac OS? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That makes makes a lot more sense to me because, like, I don't know. It's... That's, like, the only piece of Mac OS's, like, visual language that exists in iOS. Yeah. And it's been there for forever. (laughs) (laughs) Never changing it. It's so weird. (laughs) <laughs> um we mentioned earlier that like i think you you said to me that you got used to using the back button uh, yeah you know and yeah. I, and i got used to using just like swiping this way uh from from left to right to go back mm-hmm. um and i have caught myself doing that a couple of times on android yeah um but like i i will say that the swiping thing though it does feel very natural also doesn't mesh well with a lot of apps that I have that where like if I'm looking at a list of things and I can swipe items from that list away oh, right sure. to like dismiss them or like you know um largely what I'm thinking about here is pocket casts right where I've got like my queue of all yeah. of my 
Um, yeah. So like I can swipe to get rid of those. Uh, but if I, if I'm not careful, then I'm swiping to go back. And yeah, yeah it's, so it's, it's kind of weird how it doesn't, it doesn't play well, the two different UI paradigms. I do prefer swiping um, the screen rather than the back button, simply because you can do it anywhere rather than mm -hmm. having to go all the way down to the bottom of the screen. Yeah. And that brings me nicely to Ian struggling to do basic things because the UI is slightly different. Slightly. <laughs> slightly different. The struggles of Ian Buck on the iOS system. So at the beginning, I could not figure out for the life of me how to dismiss the keyboard. It's not hard. It, well, no, it's not that hard, but like when you don't know, it's impossible. It's, it's really not. It's <laughs> I figured it out like eight years ago. So like I, I figured out very early that I could dismiss the keyboard by scrolling down. Like if I'm in Hangouts or do, you know, like a chat application kind of thing, right? If I scroll, up into further, you know, further back into the uh, conversation, the keyboard goes away. Yeah. Right? It slides down. But, like, there were a few times where I was on pages where you can't scroll at all. Yeah. Uh, and there was content that was behind the keyboard and I needed to tap it. Yeah. But, like, I couldn't figure out how to get rid of the keyboard. Yeah, you just tap. You just tap Somewhere anywhere. Else. Yeah. Whereas on Android, like, you can tap anywhere you want and the keyboard will stay there. There, you know, the back button becomes a dedicated dismiss Dis the the keyboard button. Yeah. 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 Um, pasting. We both had trouble with this, as it turns out, because uh, on Android, I only had trouble because it wouldn't do it specifically when I was like trying to paste a password into Facebook. I don't know. Yeah. Well, were you long pressing? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Weird. It just didn't pop up. Hmm. Yeah, and then I was having trouble because I was trying to long press, uh, but it turns out it's just like you tap on the same spot twice to get that paste thing to show up. I think you can yeah. long press too, but it, it might depend on the application. Yeah. Um, speaking of text, like whenever I tap, like if I see that I made a mi mistake earlier in a text box, you know, and I want to go back and correct that mistake, Whenever I tap, like, it, it always kind of jumps to the beginning or the end of whatever word I'm in, like, I'm, I tap closest to. We talked about that, though. If you force touch the space bar, you can move it anywhere. Right, yeah. But, like, oh, if it's, yeah. like, a long ways away from where my cursor currently is, then, like, I want to go to that spot. Um, okay. Yeah. So, like, yeah, what I would do there is I would, like, if I need to change something that's in the middle of a word, I would tap at the end of that word, and then I would use the space bar to slide oh, over sure. into the middle of the word. Yeah. Whereas like on Android, you can just tap wherever you want and it'll go to that spot in the... So it's it's helping you less. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I also had a really weird time with email notifications early on where like I heard the sounds. I knew that that was the email notification sound. Mm -hmm. I would see the little red number go up but like I would never see a notification in the notification center and I couldn't figure out why. And it's because like, yeah, you can set apps to like each, each of those different visual representations of, of notifications are separate settings. Mm -hmm. So you can have it like do one and not the other. Uh, and I didn't know that until you showed me. Yeah. But like that's- you Just gotta turn the bananas on. That seems like such a strange combination of things to be like the default is like yeah it'll make noise and we'll have a number but we won't have a notification that'll tell you what the message is i just have notifications turned off for email except for vips so yeah okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> not to worry about that but yeah i mean it it's a weird thing to be starting with if you especially if you're unfamiliar with ios because you're like where is it? What do? How do I yeah. change anything? Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out notifications in general. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Lily. Oh, am I allowed to speak now? <laughs> you drive now. <sighs> yeah, I mean, the first thing I noticed um, was just that you can't continue to be in low power mode while plugged into a power source. Um, Honestly, it's mostly useful on the iPhone. First of all, so it's using less battery while it's charging, so it's charging more quickly. So, like, when you're on low power mode, 
um, on the iPhone and you have it plugged in, it will pop up with a silent notification, by the way. It doesn't oh. vibrate either. Okay. It's just a visual. And you can't change that because it's just like a system thing. <laughs> it's not associated with any particular app. No. It's just <laughs> the funny. phone. Um, but it'll say, you know, battery is sufficiently charged, um, low power mode, what, like deactivated or whatever, when mm-hmm. it reaches 80%, which is the recommended to stop charging your phone if you want your battery to have longevity. Yeah. It would have never occurred to me to use low power mode as like a proxy to get a notification about like, you know, to tell you that you've reached 80%. Well, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that was a thing until this reached 80% for the first time when I was on low power mode Uh charging it. And I was like, oh, that's very useful. Yeah. I just, yeah, I literally never go into low power mode because I just always have a 20,000 milliamp hour battery. Um, And I have like... I have a third party app to tell me when I've reached 80%. So, mm. among other things. Among other things. Yeah. And the nice thing about that approach is that, like, I'm not relying on it just being a complete coincidence that, like, 80% is where I want, you know? Yeah. I, I can change in that app which percentage I want it to notify me about. Yeah. Yeah. Does, does the Android system have, like, a, a battery usage report? It does, yeah, yeah. Like, it'll tell you which apps are supposedly using the most battery. Um, it doesn't really like, have, like... it tells you this is the most, and, like, these are the rest of them, or and it has percentages. It has, like, percentages, okay. yeah. Um, it doesn't have, like, a, a battery health report, though. Um, and that's oh, that's the sure. reason that I have, like, AccuBattery installed, is, like, it gives me a lot of graphs and things to show me, like, oh, yeah, I, how much capacity does your battery actually have? I think iOS has that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it, I think it was the power source that I was plugged into in this particular case. Like Mm -hmm. I was at work, it was a super slow day. Um, I started charging it at 30%. Two hours later, I had been like texting and probably looking at some media and maybe like typing emails and it had only gone to 64%. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I was like, um, two hours? And and luckily, like, the Pixel does tell you, like, oh, you're charging right now, but it's charging really slowly. Like, Yeah, it did say charging slowly, and I was like, yeah, yeah. oh, mm-hmm. I see what's going on. Um, I didn't explore all of, like, the text tones or ringtones a lot, because none of them were super thrilling. Yeah. You know, setting notification sounds for all the separate things and like going through at least like five or ten every time and being like this is still boring oh okay they all sound very similar honestly Mm. luckily on android you can just like load your own mp3 files on there so you can set it to be whatever you want but but yeah that's asking a lot for just a week-long little experiment or even in general um i really like gesture typing i will admit that it's nice to type big words with like three swipes yeah it's oh, yeah. convenient. I have some of my favorite words to type now are literally just because of like the shapes that they make on a gesture typing keyboard. <laughs> like the word thought is like a really satisfying like three little loops right in the middle of the keyboard. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's T H O U G H T. Is it? Yes. That's the that's the thought that I'm talking that's about. The thought. Um it is very very light. I noticed it the first few days it it honestly didn't feel like a smartphone. It mm. it felt like a toy. <laughs> it, it felt like a little, like, the phone that you give to your kid when you don't want them to have a real phone yet, but they want a phone. This is the heaviest phone that I've ever owned. I, it's so, <laughs> it, it's just like little. I think part, part of the fact that made it feel like a toy was the animations, too. Mm. Or were the animations. Okay. They're just, I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain. <laughs> They're kind of meh. They they are kind of meh, and like they seem like something that would be designed by someone who's going for something very simple and non fussy. Ah, and yeah, um, like someone like someone could operate the phone without a lot of, I want to say like training, like a lot of work. I don't know. The default launcher apps are circular, apparently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Instead of, like, any other normal shape, (laughs) 
And they're such small circles that you can't even... Hmm. Like, they seem so tiny compared to the icons that I'm used to. That's true. You can only have, what, four to side by side on the iPhone? And yeah. on Android, I think it's five yeah. that it lets you, at least on that screen size. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It, they just seem very small and, like, far away yeah. from what... It, it's strange. Um, and the funny thing is that, like, each phone manufacturer is kind of, like, choosing whatever shape they want. Yeah. You know, so, like, Google has selected circles. Uh, Samsung has, like, these, like teardrop shapes or something like that mm -hmm. like where they it's kind of got like a one corner and the rest of it's like round and then there's like squircles and rounded rectangles and yeah i always just rounded squares rounded rectangles yeah or round yeah well a square is a rectangle yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah like back in the day app icons on android could just be whatever shape because it could be any like png with transparency yeah you know? i remember yeah, yeah. And so, like, I have kind of clung to that, and when when an app comes out with, like, a new icon that I don't like, I'll go and change it back to the old icon, because um, my my launcher lets me do that. That is nice. Yeah. Yeah, after we switched back phones and I had to re-download everything, I had to download the latest version of Snapchat. Yeah. Which has the ugly... The dark border around yeah, the ghost. Yeah. Which is what it used to look like when it first came out. Oh. Nobody remembers that. Hmm. But, um... At least I think it did. Um, and everyone's like, it's so gross. And I'm like, it is. That's why they changed it. I don't know why they changed it back. <laughs> Speaking of Snapchat. Speaking of Snapchat. Snapchat on the Pixel versus Snapchat on the iPhone. Um, obviously, all the functions are like relatively the same. Like you get into the menu the same way. You get to the camera the same way. You swipe between screens the same way. But in general, it just it took longer to open. It took longer to get to another screen, to open the menu, to open memories, or like swiping anywhere else. Swiping to a place that you weren't already just took so long. <laughs> yeah. And it, I don't know, the, the pictures sometimes ended up blurry because I would be taking the picture. I would move the phone and then the phone would take the picture. Mm. And I was like, this is, it's just, it's upsetting. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime that like a an app accesses the camera, that's where you really see the cracks in the seams it's on so Android. Bad. <laughs> um and like Pixel is one of the best camera like in terms of, you know, having performance while having the camera open. Yeah. yeah. Um so also Snapchat's just kind of garbage from a technical perspective. <laughs> Especially on Android. Yeah. Um I did really like the little like notification icons um all along the top bar mm -hmm. they were very presentable and cute and like very useful when you don't have badges especially yes um yeah um the only thing that i really use alarms for on ios um is for like taking medicine so for me it was nice to dismiss them early since i usually end up taking them early or mm. remember to take them early in the first place um and so I don't have to worry about it. Um, yeah, I only use <laughs> alarms on iOS if I'm, like, low on battery so I can't run the Sleep Cycle app, which only really happens if I'm, like, traveling or something. Oh, so you have a third-party app that both serves to track your sleep and also gives you an alarm? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Notes app equi equivalent, which was called, like, Keep Note or to Keep... Google Keep. Google, sure. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. It d really didn't feel as thoroughly thought through. Um, you can't, like, lock a note to make it private, or I, they're listed in a grid instead of a list, which might have been a setting that I could have changed. Possibly, yeah. Um, I don't know. They, they didn't seem to be organized in any particular way. Yeah, I think they're just organized by, like, which one have you edited last. Yeah. Yeah. I and guess. you can pin ones to the top if you have, yeah. like, important ones. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but there were, like, you could make a checklist or you could just type or things like that. So that's fine. Yeah, I would have never, it would have never occurred to me to want the, like, the setting, the feature to be able to lock a note. Mm -hmm. um, because I've just never had that. 
Um, but I can definitely see why that's why that's a useful thing. It's yeah. really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah, that's one of the things I barely use the Notes app because like it it wouldn't synchronize with all of my other devices. Oh um, sure. And I have and I have you know some notes like grocery lists that are shared with like my housemates, and so that absolutely needs to be available cross platform because mm-hmm. like we have different people on different operating systems. That makes sense. So yeah. yeah. Um, widgets are pretty cool. Oh, like yeah. the widgets on Android, at least. I mean, the widgets on iOS are nice, but they're not. Yeah, they're just technically like, widgets. Yeah. Well, I mean. <laughs> Both Apple and Google can call the their things whatever they want to, yeah. you know. But yeah. like, yeah, Be, yeah, being able to have like live information that changes just sitting there in the on your home screen on your launcher, super nice. I yeah, love, that's why I love yeah. widgets. Well, yeah, I think the only one I used was um, the calendar, which yeah. was nice because I always find myself like opening that more than I think I will. I like looking at it. Um, yeah. Let's see. What else? Uh, USB-C for the win. Mm-hmm. I really do like USB-C really wouldn't make anything that much thicker, right? In theory than lightning. Marginally. But yeah. Like, yeah. No. I mean, we've got, we've got Android phones that are as thin as the, you know, current iPhones. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I do think it would be really beneficial for everyone to be able to just like have the same charging cord. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, then we can actually just have like thumb drives that are just USB C thumb drives, and you can you know move stuff from your phone to your computer to whatever. I mean, I don't use thumb drives, but okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm old school. <laughs> <laughs> it's very reliable. No, yeah. Um, what's next? Animations aren't nearly as smooth as they are on iOS. They're like clunky and weird and are we talking about like the the gesture navigation I mean, kind like of everything switching apps like okay. the yeah like the 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 app switcher or um yeah that's the worst animation it's that i've ever seen bad. <laughs> um or just like opening apps in general um uh-huh. things like that it just seems slow and sad um dark mode on twitter is just dark blue yeah. Instead of, but that's I th- that's Twitter's fault. I think on on the iOS Twitter app, it's called like Nightlight, something like that, something like that. Yeah, 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 which is nice, and it's actual dark mode. <laughs> Since I wasn't on an admin account, I'm sure there were a few things I couldn't do. The most frustrating uh, was definitely not being able to access Hotspot or tethering at all. Um, specific example i knew it was going to be a slow day at work so i took my computer to work on some stuff and then i tried to use my hotspot and it just told me that those settings weren't available for this user so i actually even contacted like google support and i was like is there any way around this and they like did the screen recording thing and they like told me where to tap and everything whoa yeah i've never done that it was fun that's cool yeah (laughs) I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that that was a good experience. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it in and of itself it was, but yeah. like the fact that we didn't fix the problem right. was not. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it seems strange that you wouldn't be able to access that. And it's not a setting um, that you can change from the admin user either to allow the other user right, to do it. We encountered something like that where you weren't able to access SMS or phones at first because we hadn't turned that on for your user account. (laughs) Um, And I'm sure that all of this is kind of because like, you know, the usage case that's expected is, oh, I'm going to make a separate user account for like my child so that I can hand my phone off to my child. And of course you don't want them to be like, you know, just accessing all of your SMSs and all your phone calls and your hotspot and everything. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, the wide angle selfie cam is really, really nice. I thought that was cool. Um, I didn't really use it much because I'm not a person who like takes selfies super often. Yeah. I don't consider myself a selfie person either, but like, you know, when I, when I'm on vacation, you know, like I, I encountered a few times where it's like, oh, I want to take a picture of like me, my brother and the giant waterfall that's behind us or, you know, I always end up being the person when there's like a large group photo going on, like, okay, I've got the it's, long arms yeah. and I've got the, the wide, wide angle. angle. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, last thing, there's a whole like separate app for reminders in the iOS system 
And I couldn't really find a place to do that on, on the Pixel except for, like, in Calendar, which I hated because it, like, didn't really do the thing that I wanted. It, it just was, like, on the day and then, like, I had to mark it as done, but it was still there mm. until I deleted it. And yeah. I was like, it's not... It's just not smooth. Yeah, reminders on Android in, in the Google ecosystem are kind of a mess. That's like how I live my life. It's like, it it used to be, I used to love it because like, I would just use reminders through inbox. Yeah. And then all of my reminders and all of my emails lived in the same place. Sure. And then like, they started kind of rolling it into the whole like, google assistant thing so that you know now you can create reminders by just speaking to the phone but like i was having weird cases where like those would sometimes show up in other places because like you know as you said reminders show up in your calendar and things like that yeah. right so it it, it is kind of nicely like you know propagates across like the whole google ecosystem but it's not super consistent because like yeah the like the ones that i created with my voice didn't show up everywhere so i kind of stopped doing that mm -hmm. um and yeah, right now it's kind of a mess. It's just, yeah. Um, yeah. Especially like, since they introduced like Google Tasks, which they have said like, oh, hey, start using this instead of using reminders or something like that. And I'm like, uh, can they be set off at certain times? I don't know. Yes. Yes. Tasks can be set off at certain times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've given up on the whole thing and I'm just using Trello as my like, you know, not just like my reminders system, but also like just in general for keeping track of like projects that I'm working on and yeah. tasks and things that I need to do. Yeah. And like reminders is something that I genuinely use probably once a day, let's say at least once a day and probably multiple times a day, honestly, like I, that's how I get things done. Yeah. Besides just having a generated list and just like having a block of time, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. 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 I'm kind of, I'm going through that crisis right now. Of trying to figure out like what my what my permanent system is for helping me to remember to do things. Mine is combination reminders and then like a checklist and notes, mm -hmm. and that's yeah, that's it. At some point, I'll probably do a like roundup of 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 course you will task management systems in Second Opinion, but that's a that's a ways away. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Lily, do you want to tell everybody where they can find you on the internet? Um, on the internet, I am usually at Lilieb64, which is spelled with two E's and not a Y, like in the middle. Um, on Twitter and Instagram, that's where I'll be. If you're super weird, I'm on Facebook as Lily Meyer, but you know, who uses Facebook? Certainly nobody's using Facebook for dating. <laughs> I can't believe that's a thing. I know. Oh, uh, it's so good. And I am your host, Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. You've been listening to an episode of The Extra Dimension, which is released under a Creative Commons attribution license. So feel free to use any part of this episode as you see fit, as long as you link back to the original page, which again is thenexus.tv slash TED46. If you would like to discuss this episode with the hosts or with any of the other listeners, please go and find it on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash the nexus tv. And if you are willing and able to support us financially as we continue to make tech-focused podcasts, uh, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the nexus tv. Come back next month for an episode about using technology in a sustainable manner. And until then, have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. Convergence. Tech news is dominated by big, bombastic personalities. Developers, 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 developers. Sometimes we're filled with awe. Wow.
Wow! Yeah! Sometimes they throw shade. Toxic hell stew. Sometimes they inspire. Live, learn, and love. On our show, Nexus Special, we recap and analyze all the biggest announcements and keynote events in the tech world. Subscribe to Nexus Special in your favorite podcast player today. I got one more thing.